Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. So in the last screencast, we left off on this slide here that you see on my screen, the mechanism of replication. We are actually going to, give me one second here. We are actually going to skip slide 25 and 26 and jump right to slide 27. Now, where does that put you on your study guide? On your study guide, slide 27 will start directly on top of page seven, right here. So page number seven, you scroll down to the ear to the bottom, page number seven, we're gonna start right here at the top of it. All right, so let's just jump into it, folks. So right now, we're talking about what DNA uh, has to go through to be replicated, right? And this is that process that occurs all the time during S phase of interphase of the cell cycle. So what is replication? Well, it's the process by which a cell copies or duplicates its DNA. Now, during DNA replication, the DNA molecule does separate into two strands, if you remember from our last screencast, and we have a very simplistic diagram shown in the top left for you. Complementary strands are produced according to specific rules, and those rules are base pairing rules or complementary base pairing rules, right? This is the same thing uh, as adenine pairs with thymine, cytosine pairs with guanine, right? That's why each side of the DNA molecule is a template for the other side, because if there's an A on this side, right, and we're using this side as a template, we're going to put in a T for the other strand, right? So we can build the other side from one side. Okay, now this one looks a little bit more complicated, but we're going to take our time getting through it. So we have a DNA molecule, and we see this DNA molecule is actually kind of bubbled out, right? This is to make room for some special enzymes to come in, because enzymes are what kind of push this whole DNA replication process forward. Uh, we have to make room for those enzymes. So DNA kind of bubbles up, and the two strands actually separate from one another, and we get these areas called replication bubbles. That's what this little bubble is, right? Replication bubbles. And there are these like Y-shaped regions right here where the DNA is not unwound on either end, but we call these replication forks. But you, you might just hear me use those words a couple of times. Just so you know, uh, they're just locations where DNA replication is occurring in the molecule. So we have our nitrogen bases, and then we have our replication fork, right? Kind of looks like a fork in the road because we have a separated part of DNA here and a non-separated part here. Another replication fork at the other end. Then we have a very special enzyme called DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase is the enzyme that pairs up A and T and C and G. So if there's an A right here, it's going to put a T. If there's a C right there, it's going to put a G. So DNA polymerase is the enzyme that follows these base pairing rules. And there are two DNA polymerases, right? Because we're going to use each side of the DNA molecule, each side of this one molecule, because it is a two-stranded molecule, to make a new DNA molecule. That's how we make two from one, by using both as a template. Both strands, I should say. Both strands of the same molecule as a template. This is our original strand. Here's our new strand being added. You don't have to keep up with which is which. It's, it's a randomly color-coded image, so I don't expect you to keep up with which, just know that there is always an original strand of the DNA molecule, right? That original molecule that was split, each side uses a template to make a new one, then each new molecule will have one original strand and one new strand. This is actually called semi-conservative replication, which we'll talk about a little later. So the two strands have separated and two replication forks have formed, which we clearly see. New bases are added following the base pairing rules, A with T, C with G. So if we have an adenine on the template strand, then a nucleotide with, oh, sorry, a nucleotide with the nitrogen base thymine is added to the newly formed strand. Remember, remember, a nucleotide is a sugar, a phosphate, and this nitrogen base. And adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine are all different types of nitrogen bases found in DNA, and that's actually what makes each nucleotide different from the next. So new nucleotides are added this way until the entire molecule has been copied. Every last nucleotide has been copied. So 
Let's look at a little question, a little sample problem. Say we have a template strand of DNA, and we just have a small piece of it. And the bases, the nitrogen bases, are in the order A, C, T, G, C, A. So what would the complementary strand to that be? And all you have to do is follow base pairing rules. Put A's with T's, C's with G's, and vice versa. And you get T, G, A, C, G, T. Simple as that. This is what DNA polymerase would have added to this strand of DNA. So the end result is two DNA molecules that will be identical to each other uh, given that there were no major mistakes in the replication process. And again, each new molecule has one original strand and one, temp and one new strand, and that means that DNA is, cons is uh, replicated semi-conservatively because at least half the original strand is still there. Now, there are a lot of enzymes at play, and we've only talked about DNA polymerase thus far, right? Remember, DNA polymerase is what adds the new nucleotides. It's what follows base pairing rules. But there are others, and this one in particular is important. This one, his name is helicase, all right? It's a family of enzymes known as helicases that have a very specific function when it comes to DNA replication. So this group of enzymes they break hydrogen bonds really, really well. And hydrogen bonds are what exist across the middle of the DNA molecule. It's what bonds adenine to thymine and cytosine to guanine. So breaking those is how we split the DNA molecule open so we can make that nice replication bubble and let the other enzymes in. So helicase is what allows room for DNA replication for the other enzymes to go to work. Basically, we refer to DNA helicase as unzipping the DNA molecule. So that when the hydrogen bonds are broken, right, those two strands of DNA are basically unwound. They're basically, instead of being all twisted around each other, each other they start to kind of separate apart because there's no forces. There's no uh, bonding occurring between the nitrogen bases of the nucleotides anymore thanks to this enzyme helicase. So again, when you think helicase, I want you to think unzipping, right? Helicase unzips the DNA molecule and is actually what creates that replication bubble and replication fork that allows room for DNA replication. Now, DNA polymerase, on the other hand, DNA polymerase, another enzyme in this story of DNA replication, is the principal enzyme involved in replication. It's, it's probably the most important DNA polymerases add new nucleotides to the existing chain. So once DNA is split apart, the strands are split open, that's when DNA polymerase has room to come in and follow base pairing rules to add new nucleotides one at a time. And they can actually go really fast. We can add our DNA polymerase in our cells, this enzyme, can do 50 nucleotides per second. That's blazing fast. And it has to be, right? Because our DNA is huge. It's full of like 6 billion nucleotides. So 50 per second, although a blazing fast rate, still means this process takes time. DNA polymerase also has the very important ability of being able to proofread the strand that it's making. So if it does make a mistake, it does actually have the ability to go back and fix that mistake. And that's very important because too many mistakes could lead to a lot of genetic mutations, a lot of changes in these new copies of DNA. And changes in DNA, mutations, bad ones, can be harmful to the organism as a whole, us. There are 11 different DNA polymerases that have been discovered thus far. And this is just kind of like a fun little fact. In the next one, we'll start, about, start talking about proofreading, folks. Stay tuned.